Hello and a warm welcome to this short pre-recorded webinar all about our collaboration course for children aged 11 to 13 years. This webinar is for you if you are a parent or carer of a child who's about to take the collaboration course with us and that's whether it's a five day version, a four or a three day version of the course. In this webinar, I'll talk about what we do at Role Models, why we believe life skills are so important, and we'll take a closer look at what your child will be doing within the collaboration course. And then finally, I'll offer some ideas, uh, tips and strategies for how you can help to embed these skills at home. So firstly, to introduce myself, I'm Louise Traherne, Director of Character Education at Role Models. My role on the team is to create the content for our courses and sessions, both offline on our face to face courses and for our online delivery, too. My background is in teaching. I was a primary school teacher for 12 years, and that included five years as a senior deputy head teacher. And it's very much using that insight from education. Uh, what are the types of skills that young people need in order to thrive? I then um, also trained as a coach. So I'm now a qualified coach and I do that alongside my work at Role Models, coaching children, teenagers, parents and adults um, on how to be their sort of best self. If you are watching this webinar back and you have any questions at all about the content or our approach at Role Models, then please do reach out and contact me. You'll see my email address on the screen here. So for those who are less familiar with what we do at Role Models, we are an impact driven education provider and we focus on life skills. And by that term life skills, we're talking about those that promote social and emotional well-being and what we like to call dynamic thinking. And we know that these are the types of skills that really help young people thrive in life rather than just survive. Uh, so they're the types of skills that make a difference at home at school and also when it comes to thinking about their future so becoming work ready and more generally life ready too so how do we do this well we like to complement traditional academic education by delivering our online and offline courses for children between the ages of 3 to 15 and the areas that we're focusing in include leadership skills confidence resilience, a growth mindset, developing creative problem solving skills, collaboration, um, and just generally helping the children think about how to reach their potential and how to work effectively with others, how to build healthy relationships. So why are these life skills so important? Well, you're all here, you're all watching the webinar because you've signed your child up for the course, so I'm sure you don't need convincing. But when it comes to the impact that they can have, we like to mention three particular areas. We know that life skills make a difference when it comes to improved mental health and well-being. So if we can help your child develop the resilience, the confidence, the coping strategies, the ability to connect and communicate effectively with others, then we know it's going to have a positive impact on giving them a good foundation within their mental health. And this has always been important, but particularly as we come out of a global pandemic, you know, we really need to be think about how we're equipping our young people, their sense of happiness, satisfaction, their relationship with self, how do they view themselves and can they develop healthy relationships with other people too? We also know that these skills make a difference when it comes to academic attainment. So if we think about your child in a classroom environment, um, if they've got the resilience, the perseverance, if they can collaborate effectively with those around them, they're going to be much more likely to reach their academic potential. They're going to be ready to take risks. They're going to be able to respond more positively to any sorts of setbacks that they might come up against. And then thinking beyond the, uh, the, the present to your child's future, we know that these skills really make a difference when it comes to um, work readiness. So we hear from employers time and time again that they're not just looking for those with the exam grades, the qualifications, that also must be balanced with the type of people skills. You know, they're looking for young people who can think creatively, 
who can solve their own problems, who can communicate well with other people. And if we build on that further, you'll see here a list of the top 10 skills needed to thrive from the World Economic Forum. Now, if you just take a look at the types of skills listed there, we've got people management, creative thinking, complex problem solving, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making. Now, those types of skills all require confidence. They require practice. They're not just going to happen magically overnight. We really believe that we need to be taking the opportunity to teach children how to do these things in order to, to future proof them. Uh, if we think about the types of jobs that our young people are preparing for, you know, many of them don't yet exist. And we know that with all the, the changes um, and advancements in technology and artificial intelligence, the types of skills that we can future proof them with are these ones, because these are the types of skills that are very unlikely to be replicated by technology. You know, it is the emotional intelligence. It's the people. It's the connection. It's that ability to make judgments and decisions effectively, to negotiate, to be able to respond to conflict. These are all types of things that they're likely to need along the way, whether that's at work or just in life. So at Role Models, we like to focus on four particular areas. That's resilience, leadership, creative problem solving and collaboration. And the course that your child is taking with us is all about collaboration. So they're going to be focusing on teamwork, how to work effectively with others. And in the version for 11 to 13 year olds, we go into some more nuanced areas within collaboration, which I'll talk more about in a moment. So the collaboration course, what will it involve? Well, throughout the course, whether it's a three day, four day or five day version, they will be having loads of opportunity to work with other people in their group and the role model working with the group will be challenging them in a really healthy way so they will be given loads of tasks and challenges some of which are quite hard and we purposefully do that to, to get the children to think well how will i respond in that moment when i feel stuck and what we're trying to develop with them we're looking at communication. What does effective communication look like, feel like? And of course that includes talking, but it also includes listening to. We'll look at teamwork. What does effective teamwork look like? Can we take inspiration from those teams around us, um, whether that's a famous football team or a team unit that we know much more closer to home? that we think work effectively together? What are the qualities that they have? We'll also be developing our own confidence. And I think that's incredibly important. If we want children to communicate effectively, to assert themselves in different situations, we've got to help them develop that inner strength and confidence. And how can we do that in a way that feels authentic? I think that's incredibly important for this age range that, by this point, we've got some very developed personalities. So, you know, if I am more introverted, extroverted, um, if I am quiet or if I'm loud or whatever it might be, how do I find ways to assert myself, to, to show my confidence that feels like my authentic self, that I'm not just using a strategy and playing a part? Part of the course also involves looking at developing interview skills and presenting, so public speaking. And we purposefully look at those because, again, they help develop individual confidence. And that helps in more formal moments when we might be going for an interview or we might be doing public speaking. But those skills are incredibly transferable to when we're with a group of friends or when we're in any sort of situation where we've got to present ourselves, when we've got to own our own ideas and be comfortable with, sh you know, showing ourselves and, and making a good impression. We're also looking at how to build and develop successful relationships. Now, I think for this age, 11 to 13, whether we've just changed schools or we're about to change schools at, at age 13, 
finding ourselves in a new environment with new people. These are the things we've got to be thinking about. How do we develop successful, effective relationships? How do we come across? How are other people perceiving us? Um, and part of that for me is about the young person exploring, well, what's important to me? What are my values? And what do I really believe in? And then how do I live and work by that? So how do I show my integrity? And we explore with the children, what do we mean by integrity? And let's look at people that embody integrity, that really um, speak their truth. And I talk about that a lot, about speaking your truth. So, you know, what feels right to you? How would you respond in different situations and moments? And when we're working with other people, integrity becomes even more important because you know people are looking at us and and making judgments and decisions um, and we need to show our true selves we'll also look at important areas including conflict resolution something that will definitely come up for your child at some point in some context whether that's sibling conflict whether that's some form of conflict within their friendship group um, how do we resolve it how do we manage it and how do we stay firmly in the assertive area rather than being passive and also rather than being aggressive um, and of course that that runs through that's a thread that runs through the whole course which is how do we develop that confidence but yet still retain that humility. So we want to be confident, we want to be assertive, but how do we remain true to ourselves and really mindful about how we're coming across? So here I'd love to mention our role models. We're incredibly lucky to work with a range of fantastic, diverse role models who've got experience in loads of different areas. Many of them are teachers, ex-teachers, we've got actors and performers, we've got those interested in mental health and well-being, drama therapists, play therapists, and they are brilliant at what they do. They are inspirational people with lots of energy and passion. And your child will be working with one of our particular role models, not necessarily one of these on my screen. Um, the role model will be very skilled at building that rapport with your child and getting the best from them from the time that they're spending together. The role model will be writing a report on your child which you'll receive um, after the course is finished and in that report they're giving you feedback about what progress they've seen and perhaps even more importantly where to go next so where do they feel your child uh, still needs to develop further what have they noticed and what insights can they offer you as the parent i definitely encourage you to have a chat with your child's role model at drop off and pick up um, get their verbal feedback too um, and um, yeah, get to know them. So to share some example activities, I went through that list earlier of the skills and the attributes and the themes we're exploring. How do we do that? Well, a lot of it is done through explaining the theory to the children. So we've got some videos, some information. The role model will be you know, facilitating that discussion. What do we mean by humility and integrity? how do we work together and how do we show effective listening skills but then we always bring it back to much more active application so some examples of the activities they'll do if i just explain tank team to you the group are put together in a line so let's say you've got six or seven children they are all stood one behind the other with their hands on the shoulder of the person in front. So it's like one long snake or tank. And all of the children are blindfolded, apart from the very person at the back. Um, and the aim of this challenge is on the floor, we've got balls of different colors, and the tank team is being led around by the person at the back to try and get to a particular ball, pick it up and then put it in the bucket. And it's a timed exercise. How quickly can they collect all the balls and put them in the bucket? Now, of course, all of the team can't see apart from the person at the back. So they have to develop a way of communicating. How do we say move forward? How do we stop? How do we turn left? How do we turn right through nonverbal communication? And they're usually pretty good at working out a strategy very quickly. And it's about how we work together. How do we 
begin to understand each other if we can't talk? And how do we like work together for a, a shared goal? Um, they change positions, so they each going to go doing different things. And we can do lots of fun things with this exercise, like have both teams racing against each other at the same time. So you've got that competitive element to it as well. Team drawing um, is another uh, example of an activity where the team are given a large pen and wrapped around this pen, we've got pieces of string. And together, let's say there's five or six of them in a team, they have to use the bits of string to get the pen to stand up and to be able to draw and eventually write a word with the pen. And nobody is allowed to touch the pen. The only thing they're allowed to touch is the string. So if you imagine five or six bits of string coming off, they've got to work together. They are allowed to communicate to hold that really tight and in, in the right position to be able to then push and pull to make the pen move. It's quite a frustrating task. So here we're looking at how do they remain resilient? How do they apply their growth mindset? And what's their attitude when something goes wrong or where someone in the team makes a mistake? My values. So I mentioned the importance of, of getting the children to connect with, well, what is important to me? What are my values? What do I stand for? And here we're taking, I suppose, more of a coaching approach and we're actually getting the children to reflect on this. So they're given a simple list of lots of different values and they're given some reflection time to actually say, well, well if I was going to highlight out of this list of 50 different values, what would my top five be? And once we do this, it's so effective to then stop and think, OK, so if those are the five things that are really important, how do I live by that? And in different moments and situations, can I stay true to my values? You know, if it's fairness, if it's kindness, if it's whatever it might be, how do my decisions, my responses reflect that? And then healthy living and well-being facts. We feel like our role models are perfectly placed to be able to inspire your children. And we like them to share every day of the course one particular thought or fact about how to keep ourselves healthy. And that could be physical health. It could be mental health and well-being. It could be emotional health. Um, and it's a very simple conversation where they might say, you know, what what's the importance of staying hydrated? Let's talk about how important it is to drink water, what it does for us. They'll often talk about swaps as well. Um, how could we make a, a simple swap, maybe less time on our video games and gaming, uh, more time physical exercise? What might that swap look like? What types of physical exercise do you all do? Let me as the role model tell you about what I do to take my exercise. And often we know that these are the same conversations you're having at home with your young person, but sometimes they just land that little bit better when it's the role model saying it. So, um, do ask your child what, what the healthy living fact each day is. Some ideas for how you can embed this work at home. So I want to talk briefly first about a growth mindset. Um, this is not our resilience course. This is our collaboration course. In our resilience one, we go into a lot more detail about a growth mindset, but I still feel like a growth mindset is very relevant when it comes to collaborating with other people. So how can you help develop it at home? A few quick ideas, emphasizing effort rather than outcome. Um, I think if we want as parents and educators, our child to move away from perfectionism, to be able to bounce back from mistakes, then we have got to start praising and highlighting their effort and their attributes rather than purely the outcome alone. OK, so whether it's an exam grade, whether it's a result of some sort, whether they sharing, whatever it might be, we need to not just focus on, wow, you got 100 percent. Well, I'm really pleased you got 90 percent. We've got to actually say, wow, fantastic, you got 100 percent. But you know what I'm most proud of is the effort you took with your revision this week. There were moments when it got really tough and you didn't want to do it or you had to, you know, make some difficult decisions about not going out and socializing with your friends. And that is what I'm really, really proud of. It doesn't mean that we can't ever focus on the outcome. You know, we absolutely can and say, wow, brilliant, you got 100%. I'm really proud of that. But let's balance that off with also 
highlighting the attribute to. Model and share our own examples. So whether that's our own mistakes, um, we need to basically model a growth mindset too. So how are we responding to adversity? Do they hear us use a growth mindset and, and sort of say, OK, this is tricky, this is difficult, this is a challenge, but that's going to be a good thing. Um, or I'm finding this hard, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm not quite there with it yet. If I keep going, I'm sure I'm capable of making progress. Um, just embracing that culture of mistakes, too. We've got to talk about them if we want our child to be OK with making them and help your child recognize the progress that they're making no matter what age your child is uh, young children but also children you know early teens i think fail to recognize their progress so in those moments when they're ready to give up and quit we can step in and just say look I, you know i can see you're still struggling i can see you're not there yet but look how far you've come with this compared to half an hour ago or last week or last month you know you are moving in the right direction Letting them struggle and fail, perhaps the hardest one as a parent. But if we truly want them to develop that resilience, that growth mindset, we have to allow them the opportunity to apply it. So rather than engineering the situation or stepping in, swooping in and, and preventing them from experiencing any difficulty, just be ready to allow that to happen and just be there and support them. And knowing that that experience, although uncomfortable, will help them develop resilience, which will serve them well in the future. And then finally, encourage them to step outside of their comfort zone. So whether it is changing schools, making that transition, um, starting in a very different environment with new people, talk about how that in itself is going to take them from their comfort zone into their learning zone. I'm a big believer that if children understand the theory behind that and are perhaps more ready to expect the different feelings and thoughts that that's going to bring they'll be ready to accept it and more ready to actually take the risk in the first place because they understand that it might feel difficult but they also understand why it's a good thing to do if you want to know more on a growth mindset there is a link to a video on that slide too and then building on that ideas for at home about some of the more sort of nuanced aspects of collaboration and um, kind of helping your child reach their potential with their confidence um, and working with other people. I think we don't do enough of this highlighting integrity. So if your child is particularly inspired by, I don't know, it could be a, a celebrity, it could be a sportsman, it could be someone in your community, it could be a teacher, it could be someone in your family, is just have those lovely conversations about what is it about how that person conducts themselves that makes them so great? You know, what is it that we admire? And try and pull upon those examples of integrity. You know, they do and say everything that aligns with their beliefs. They're ready to assert themselves. They're ready for, to stand up for what they believe in. And they do all of that in a very um, mindful way. Definitely don't shy away for allowing opportunities for conflict resolution. Uh, lots of parents will say to me, I really want to help my child have a healthier response to conflict. You know, they, they perhaps just retreat into being totally passive or the other extreme. You know, they, they don't know how to handle it. They're, they're aggressive. They're cross and angry. Now, the only way we're going to build the skills for this is to allow it to happen. So whether that's with a sibling or within a friendship situation is allow your child to explore different responses. Um, be ready to help them with that. But if we're always solving the conflict for them, they never have that opportunity to apply it. Reflecting outside of the moment, this is more of a recommendation, really. I think particularly as our children reach early teens and then into the teenage years, sometimes having those conversations about or how do we feel that that went? Um, or what are you struggling with? Let's um, let's talk about this fallout that you've had with your friend, or let's talk about this argument that's just happened with your sibling, and then how you're you know you're really cross and angry about it. Often, when we try and do that in the moment, it's not successful, and that's for a number of different reasons. Mainly that your child is still in that moment 
and they're not able to talk rationally, to think rationally and to have that conversation. And often even trying to have it with them as the parent can cause more conflict. So just pick your moments. And I think often choosing a moment outside is much more um, effective. So whether that's, you know, on a walk, on a drive somewhere, just picking back up on something that happened and saying, you know, should we talk about that? How do you feel about it? Um, and then that leads me on to the next point, which is perspective taking. I think if we want our, our child to develop this humility, this empathy to understand, OK, when I work with other people, when I meet other people and develop relationships, what do I need to be mindful of? What what are other people perceiving when I do and say things? OK, that doesn't come overnight and that doesn't come without work. So we have to talk about, hmm, I'm wondering and you can start off with your family unit, by the way. So, you know, when, when you arrive back from school and you did X, Y, Z, you know, or when you, your dad came home from work, I'm just wondering from dad's point of view, you know, how was he feeling? He had a tricky day. And when you said or did this or left this, just sat in the middle of the room, I'm wondering how what he's making of that. Um, and to begin with, this might be met with not very much, but it will be going in and I think if you talk out loud your own perspective taking, so um, it could be about you talking about people at work or your friends and thinking, yeah, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how this person is feeling or how that came across when I did and said this. Now, obviously, that's in balance with everything else. We don't want our child to overthink every single action and, and, and response that they make. But I think developing that awareness that mindfulness of 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 other people um, and that empathy um, so developing their empathetic responses and then confidence related i would suggest any opportunity at home for debate discussion um, presenting their ideas practicing interview skills really important and that can be formally done or informal so it could just be chatting with your child about what's in the news or it could be opportunity for just sharing their opinion you know what do you think do you agree with your brother do you disagree with your sister um and really encourage that healthy disagreement because i think often children will have that assumption that if we want to stay friends with people, we have to think the same as them. We have to agree with them. We have to like the things that they like and do the things that they want to do. Now, when they get to 11 plus, 11, 12, 13, you know, it's really important that they understand that difference of opinion is a healthy thing. Now, the only way that that can come about is if they've heard difference of agreement being um, welcomed and being done in a, in a healthy way, in a positive way. Embedding the learning. Now, one issue with courses like ours and all the different experiences that we go on is we can have a fantastic time and then we go back to our everyday world of being and habits, don't we? And we sort of forget about it. So we're really keen to embed their experience with us. So how do we do that? Well, one thing is the role model working with your child will be writing an email at the end of every day of the course that summarizes what they've been up to. Um, there's also photos attached to this and you'll receive that at the end of the day. It's a really great way of uh, connecting with your child and opening up. So we know that you, when you ask, what did you do today? You often get nothing back. So use that email to say, oh, tell me about this task. Tell me what's going on in the photo so you can share in their learning with them. You'll receive the end of week report that I mentioned. You'll also receive 10 top tips from us about how to embed these skills at home. There will be some follow up videos sent to you and these are for your child to watch. So we space those out two weeks, four weeks, six weeks after the course is finished. Just short videos asking them, you know, hey, how are you using this since the course is finished? Have you been thinking about this? And on the last day of the course, your child will be writing a letter to themselves, to their future self. And we get them to reflect on, right, what have you covered this, this, in this course? How do you hope to use it in the future? We hold on to those letters and then we send them to them in the post um, after the course is finished. So just when they've forgotten all about role models, they get the letter and they're reminded. And then finally, 
all of the children receive one of our passports where they've got key skills ticked off that they've covered in the collaboration course. They'll receive a certificate and they'll also receive one of our role models t-shirts as well. Then finally, for more specific information about the course that your child is taking with us, please do have a careful read of your pre-course email. We run these courses in lots of different venues at different times, so there'll be specific information for your venue, um, where to drop off uh, in your email, so have a good read of that. You will have been prompted to have filled in a pre-course form, um, so no doubt you've already done that. If you haven't, we will we will remind you and in that course form you've given us lots of information about your child and anything specific we need to know about their needs. Um, the times of the course are from 10 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon but we do also offer an extended day package so look in your in your pre-course email for more information about that. Please if your child can bring in their own lunch make it nut free um, and some water as well. And then depending on the time of year that your child's course is happening, please do make sure they've got suitable clothing. So whether that's um, a coat, sun cream, a hat, um, and look out for the drop off and pick up information. But we do ask that whether it's parents, nannies, that you drop off and leave your child with us for the day so that they fully experience that, that independence. I really hope that this has been helpful to give you more information about the course itself. If you do have any other questions, please do give us a call, drop us an email. You can follow us if you're not already on our social media. We've got some links here. And um, I really hope that your child has a fantastic experience with us um, and we look forward to meeting them soon. Thank you.